Hiya, my name is Susie. I'm a medical illustrator and animator. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of the ways that we use visual references when creating medical illustrations that show a figure. And I'm going to show you a couple of the ways that you can use these techniques to help with your work and when you're practicing. So as a medical illustrator, it's not unusual to be given a brief that asks for a person of a specific demographic with anatomy added and possibly showing some symptoms of a disease. Using reference is an important part of this process because we need to create images that are not only accurate, but also original and true to the subject that we want to show. References are vital for all of this, but sometimes we can rely on them a little too much or not enough and cause our drawings to suffer as a result. It's unlikely that we will get to draw a subject from life or have time to do this in a production environment, so we often rely heavily on using both written and visual references to create our work. So let's say you're given a brief for an illustration that is going to depict a figure, and you come across the perfect visual reference that sums up everything that you need to show. Now, even if you were to come across one single perfect image like this, relying on this image only can cause you to run into some issues, such as showing unnecessary or incorrect information, problems with preserving anonymity, especially if you're showing a patient's face, or even licensing or copyright infringement territory. It can also cause your drawing to look a little bit flat and prevent you from creating a truly original piece, which is always a nice thing to be able to do. So how do we avoid these pitfalls? Using the brief as your guide, you can start gathering references. You can use Google image search, stock image sites, or make your own. The key is to gather as many as possible for the points that you need to illustrate. Keep everything in a folder or somewhere you can easily access everything. I like to use Notion and also Pinterest as well, depending on the project. Okay, so coming into Photoshop, I've pulled in a couple of references from my collection that I think will be really good to get a good start from. There's a couple of things I need to do first before I can get into sketching. So this reference that I've taken myself is pretty much the position that I'm looking for, but there's a couple of things that I need to do to get the exact pose. So I want this back arm from this second image, but not from the first, so I'm just going to mask this off and then kind of Frankenstein them together so I have a rough idea of the pose that I'm getting. As well as the two images here, I've also got my original reference document open on my other screen so that I'm always looking at that just to see if I'm on the right track. So to begin with, you want to limit yourself to building the basic structure of the drawing and getting in all the correct proportions and basic shapes. But to help you figure things out, it's a good idea to try and look at your reference images in terms of their primitive shapes. So you can even draw over them to see what the basic shapes are underlying each structure. Irrespective of your skill level, it's always a good idea to keep checking your drawing against your references and try not to be guessing wherever you can possibly help it. And if for any reason you're feeling a little bit lost or you're unsure about where the drawing's going, it's totally fine to jump back into reference hunting and see if you can find something to help you. It's also great to hit up a classmate or a colleague who might be able to spot something you may not be able to see. Once you've figured these things out, it'll be much easier further down the line when you're adding details and getting to the fun part of finishing off the image. So once you've got some basic proportions down and you've got a good idea of the direction the drawing's going in, it's a good time to expand into the other references that you've collected and start to add in a few more distinguishing details. So the great thing about these tips is that you don't need to necessarily wait for a specific brief to come in before you can put them to use. You can actually adapt and employ these tactics to help with your drawing practice and when you're working on self-initiated projects. So one method is to take two photos from different angles of the same subject and then draw the subject from a completely new angle. And this will help you to develop your spatial awareness skills. An alternative is to take images of two different subjects and then take aspects from each image and combine them to create a whole new drawing. So these methods are definitely more of a challenge than drawing from a single reference image, but they can really go a long way to helping you develop and maintain your independence from using single visual references. And this is an incredibly useful skill to be able to bring to any job right across the art industry. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe for more illustration tutorials. And if you'd like to see more tips and tricks and support the channel so that we can continue to create more videos, consider signing up for the Patreon. Thanks so much. Thank you.